So in this video I'm going to show you the method that I use to build a, a helical antenna for 5.8 gigahertz to use with your FPV setup. Now I just wanted to quickly show you this that I've got here on the bench and it's a six turn helical or it will be when I uh, finish it off and a six turn helical for 5.8 gigahertz will give me around 12.6 dB of gain. Now with a six turn helical it's going to have quite a narrow beam so obviously if you've got this on your uh, FPV setup on the side of your head you're going to have to make sure that you're always pointing directly at your aircraft if not if you turn it off by a small angle the power will actually drop dramatically and you can lose the link so uh, one way to get around this is people actually use smaller turns on their helicals so they've got a uh, much wider beam width and then uh, you're not so dropping off uh, your signal so much just by small turns of your head. Now unfortunately though a three turn helical and for the 5.8 gigahertz band will only give you around 9.5 dBi so you're actually um, sacrificing some dBi there for uh, actual beam width. Now one way to actually get around this is to construct a double helical antenna now this is a three turn helical and uh, the double turn will actually give me a dbi of around 11 so you're not actually doubling your dbi like you would if you uh, put an extra three coils in like this one because of the way that the signal propagates through throughout the uh, actual turns and how these two turns interact with each other but uh, you can get some significant day gain by uh, putting in a uh, second uh, set of uh, coils in there and uh, then you're not sacrificing that beam width so uh, you're less likely to uh, drop signal if you turn your head slightly in one direction or the other. So to make this antenna what you're going to need to do is download the template in the description box below and cut it out and then find yourself a uh, piece of tubing preferably metal or hard plastic that is exactly 18 millimeters in diameter and uh, actually wrap the template around the tubing. Now, to find some tubing, what I found is uh, one of these uh, really cheap torches from the uh, pound shop and actually took that to pieces. It's exactly uh, 18 millimeters diameter and I've wrapped my uh, template around that. Now, the wire that I'm actually using for this antenna is uh, this steel galvanized gardening wire. It's actually made for uh, fences to tie fences together. It's uh, two millimeters thick and uh, you can get it pretty cheap off eBay. I'll put a link in the description box to the uh, buyer that I uh, purchased mine off to give you an idea of what to actually look for on uh, eBay or wherever you want to try and purchase this. Now what I've also done to make it a little bit easier is drill uh, two small holes where the actual coils start. That way what I can do is put my wire in there and it will enable me to give me a bit of a start so I can actually start turning it around to actually get those coils in place. Now I'm doing this on camera here to actually show you but if you can get somebody to actually give you a hand and keep it nice and tight on this end while you actually roll it with the uh, tube itself you'll get a much better coil and uh, that will hold the shape much better. So once I've got my first wire wrapped around there and before I actually start wrapping my second wire I just want to uh, manoeuvre these coils here where they don't quite uh, match up with the template. But if you are doing this uh, by yourself one little trick you can do is get a pair of pliers and give that end a real good pull and tighten those coils up as much as you can. So once you're happy that uh, the first coils are actually lined up on the template then uh, it's time to put the second coil in so exactly the same start off with that little hole there and start winding the coil around so once you're happy that the coils are spaced out nice and even you want to get some uh, masking tape and just lightly wrap it around the center of these coils just so it's uh, actually holding the uh, wires so they can't move but it's not actually sticking down onto the uh, template on the tube here and what I'm going to do now I'm going to cut it away from uh, these two loops here so we can actually slide 
it all off. What I'm actually going to do now is solder a bracing at, at the top here that I will be removing later. It's just to actually add some strength and uh, keep all these coils in place while I actually uh, solder at the bottom and the rest of this antenna. So as I said this piece of copper wire that I've soldered in here is just actually to uh, hold them all together until I've completed the antenna and then I'm going to remove this. Now what I want to do is uh, put a piece of copper wire in here that uh, I'm going to actually solder the uh, SMA connector and everything to and uh, what you want to actually do is look down and cut away uh, this part of the coil here because you want it to uh, match up exactly with uh, the top here so just get it so you line it up by eye and actually cut this part of the coil away and solder that into place. So next you want to get yourself a piece of tin from uh, a sweet tin or a cookie tin something like that and uh, it needs to be tin because we need to solder this in place so you can't use aluminium of course and uh, what I'm going to do is just get some emery paper and rub off the varnish that uh, is actually on this piece of tin and the paint on the top there. So you want to cut out a rectangle from the tin there and uh, it's exactly 10 millimeters width and uh, 50 millimeters long and I'm going to cut across here now diagonally so we've got two triangles. So these two triangles now are going to act as little metal shims to bring the impedance down which is uh, running at about 150 ohms for a helical antenna and uh, we want to match that down to 50 ohms to the uh, coax line. So what we're going to do is the shortest side is actually going to be soldered onto this copper wire that we just put in place here and the longest side running down and soldered to the actual helical itself and then we'll trim away any waste and do the same on the other side as well. So that's the metal shims actually soldered in place and I've just uh, used the Dremel tool and just ground down the sides here so it's nice and flat and it matches in exactly with that curve and that should bring that impedance right down now to uh, the 50 ohms that we actually need. So for the back reflector for this antenna what I've got here is a uh, round piece of copper clad circuit board and I've actually cut it out using one of these uh, cheap saw tools you can get these off eBay and Amazon as a uh, drill attachment and the diameter of this circle is actually 34 millimeters. Now what I'm going to do with the reflector here I'm going to attach a uh, SMA bulkhead connector here but instead of using the little holes here that uh, you would either put some self tapping screws through or some very small nuts and bolts I'm going to ground off the sides here clean them up a little bit and I'm going to solder directly onto this um, copper clad side of the board here this is going to come through so we can get through that hole there and when it's soldered in place what we can do is then solder our helical antenna directly to that small pin through there so we should have a uh, really good solid connection there with the uh, SMA connector and of course because uh, this is single sided board this piece of fiberglass here will uh, act as an insulator between the helical antenna itself and the back reflector so we don't have to worry too much about that. So I've tacked the sides in there and that's uh, plenty enough solder to actually hold it in place it's not going to go anywhere and what I'll probably do right at the end before I paint it is uh, put a little bit of a uh, epoxy putty around the sides as well just to tidy it up a little bit before I actually paint. So I'm going to solder the helical antenna now onto that SMA connector and what I've done I've just put a little bit of solder on the centre pin there to tin it up made sure I've got a nice blob of solder on here and I'm going to solder it directly in the middle of this uh, bar here that goes across with the uh, shims attached. So now that uh, the helical is soldered in place onto that SMA connector I'm going to add a little bit of epoxy glue now to the base just to give it some more strength because we've only got that small blob of solder there on that centre pin holding the helical together at the moment. So now that the epoxy is set on the base there on those uh, bottom two coils it's added a lot more strength to it now. All that's left to do is desolder this strengthening bar that I put in at the beginning we don't need it anymore and uh, remove this masking tape and uh, we can add some uh, acrylic paint to it. And this is another helical antenna that I've just built and instead of just using epoxy to hold uh, that helical antenna onto that uh, back reflector what I actually did here is I used some stiff card to build up 
a uh, trough around the uh, bottom reflector here and then I flooded in some uh, epoxy filler and just let that set and it's uh, about a quarter turn up on those coils and it just really holds it stiffly in place there I mean this one's not going to break or anything it's not going to go out of place unless you uh, stood on it or something like that uh, it's a really good another strong way of holding it in there so I hope you enjoyed that video and you found it informative and uh, you actually go out there and build one of these for yourself and of course uh, when you've got one of these on your receiving end it works really really well with one of these on your transmitting end so uh, yeah let me know how you get on if you actually build one of these and uh, please drop a comment below and let us all know and uh, if you enjoyed this video please as always give it a thumbs up it does help on YouTube and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.